We're going to welcome in women's basketball coach Sherry Herrick. Coach, always a pleasure to talk with you. Welcome to the Roadshow. Great to see you again, Matt. Great to see you as well. First and foremost, you were selected to the NCAA tournament for the fourth consecutive uh, tournament and the 17th appearance in school history. How does it feel to be back in postseason play? Yeah, it's always exciting, and, and I'm most, most excited for our kids. Our freshmen have never been there, and uh, our seniors, really. Hensel was there four times, but the other, three, the other two only got three opportunities because COVID, and the one, COVID shortened it. So um, this is really their only second real chance at this, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just happy they get the opportunity. They earned it. Yeah, they absolutely did. Once again, another 20-win season. You go 21-4 and four in uh, the regular season. You go 1-1 one and one in the tournament. You come up a little bit short against Marietta in the semifinal. And you have to wait a little bit, of uh, almost four full days, um, to find out whether you were going to get that at-large bid. And obviously, you were kind of watching how the other tournaments were playing out and hoping for things uh, to weigh out in your favor, and they did. But uh, how long did that almost four-day wait seem, and what do you do as a team during that time? Yeah, well, first thing is we just took a couple days off. Yeah. And, uh, well I had talked, deserved. Yeah, <laughs> had talked to the seniors. There's a couple websites with data out there that um, were pretty positive we were going to get in. And so I asked our seniors. We shot a little bit on Sunday last night and then uh, had practice planned for today. Um, we were pretty confident that our resume was strong enough. We were 4-3 and three in region, against regionally ranked teams. We strong strength of schedule. And our winning percentage was pretty good, so we felt pretty good about getting in. But until your name's called, you never, you, you know. never, <laughs> you never really know. Well, your name was called, and you you get on the line, and you finally see Baldwin Wallace pop up there. It took a little while for the Yellow Jacket name to pop up, as it seems to always do when you're on that at-large bubble. But it finally came, and. Uh, how nice was it to get that relief when you see Baldwin Wallace pop up there? Yeah, the, the kids were really excited. And, uh, yeah, it's just it, it's exciting. You know, there are 430-some women's basketball teams in, in Division Three, And to be one of 64 remaining, you know, there's 360-some-odd there's teams done right now, and, and we get to continue. And, that's always special, and, and um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, again, just really happy yep. for our kids. The, the one thing you always hear when you do get an at-large bid or even get in and you don't get the draw you want, you, you're still playing in March, and there's exactly. 360 other teams that would be trading places with you in a heartbeat. 100%. So what was the mood like at, uh, at practice today? Uh, obviously, it was short-notice practice. You find yeah. out barely before 3 o'clock, and then – quick turnaround before you're back on the court yeah it, it, it was good um it was really good last night too um i think anytime it's such january february is such a grind and uh to get a couple days off <laughs> you know it, it was almost nice not playing saturday the kids got some of them got to go home and um, just got a chance to get away a little bit and so the mood coming back was, was pretty good because yeah. they did get a little chance to rest yeah, it gives them an opportunity not only to rest physically, but also take that mental break where you can, you know, flush whatever's in your system and, and forget about the struggles that you had over the last week and, in your case, the last two months of the season when the OAC race was as tight as it's been in a long time with pretty much the top four teams having a crack at it, and they get to hit that reset button and come back refreshed. Um, that Obviously, you want to win championships. That's the business you're in, but... When you don't and you have that ability to sit back and you still get into the postseason, does that weigh in your favor, do you think? Um, it's so hard to tell. Warburg's really good. Yeah. They're, they're really good. Um, we did not get, you know, sometimes you'd rather have an AQ from a, a weaker league yeah. than an at-large because everybody in the at-large pool is really good and has a great resume. Yeah. Uh, unlike some AQs. Right. And, um yeah, we, we got a tough draw, but again, we're playing now. We're playing in March, and that's always one of our goals. We don't talk a lot about our goals because they don't change much. It's always <laughs> to win the league. It's always to make it, win the league, win the league tournament, get in the NSA tournament, and then get as far as we can yep. when, when we get in that. And um, we missed on the first two um, by not a lot, but we did, and, and this is another opportunity. At least we can check one of the boxes of our goals. Yeah, you. You did kind of touch on it a little bit. Your draw, 
when you, you see BW pop up on the line, you're like, great, where are we going? Who are we playing? Okay, Wartburg, another at-large team out of a very tough conference. It's going to be a good physical battle in that first round. It, we'll get to that after that. But what do you think of this matchup with Wartburg? Have you had a chance to, to take a quick look at them at all? Yeah, we, we took a real quick look. Synergy's wonderful. The, the software we use, um, everybody uses it now, and you can pull up everything yep. in, in a pretty quick, uh, quick way. But they're athletic. Um, they're not huge, but they're long. Yeah. And uh, shoot the three a ton, get to the free throw line. Um, they, they, they're they're really good. They're really they're, they're going to be tough tough to play re regardless. And um, yeah, we're now our league tends to be pretty three heavy yep. as well. So um, it's not like it's the first time we've had to guard a lot of threes. Right. But uh, they shoot it at a pretty high level. I think they're like 32 percent from three. A pretty good team percentage to be dealing with. Yeah, um, it is. But with that. Another key, and it, it kind of bitch in the Marietta game, were rebounds. Mm -hmm. how, because you're going to face a team that shoots a lot of threes, how important is it to look back at that Marietta film and be like, hey, this is where we made our mistakes, and this is where we cannot afford to make our mistakes on the boards if we hope to make this a long tournament run? Yeah, we've been talking about rebounding forever. <laughs> um, it doesn't help when you lose Kaylee you know, that was, late that, in the season. Yeah, and, and we're still trying to figure out kind of how to play without Kaylee Ressler. Um, and other kids have stepped up well. I mean, we beat Ohio Northern without her, which was no easy task, but we're not the same team, obviously. And she was our leading defensive rebounder, and we were asking other kids, you got to step up. No one person has to do it, but each of you need to get one or two more. Yep to cover up that uh, that difference. And so we've been talking about that for a long time, not just Marietta. Mary just, Marietta just exposed us more. But, um, you know, a lot of long shots also lead to long rebounds, which allows our guards to rebound even more, which, which hopefully is a good thing for us. And you have some guards that like to get in the mix, and I think that's really led by, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, you know, looking at the roster, if she's the smallest player on the team, but she's one of them. Emily Irwin loves to get in the fight, and she will go after every loose ball. I, I love watching her play because defensively, I think she's probably a headache for everybody that has to contend with her. But she sets an important example of being that guard that's not afraid to get in the mix. Yeah, she she just hates to lose. Yeah, you can see that yeah, very quickly. She's a competitor, and... Uh you know, she didn't rebound a lot when we had Kaylee, but when Kaylee went down, she responded to the to the call, saying, "Hey, we need a couple more rebounds a game out of you." And you know, she does everything she can at that height. She, she could jump though. When, <laughs> when she gets in there, she she's not letting a lot of people take it from her. Right. No. No doubt about that. She is a tough out on both ends of the floor. Um, but that's really kind of how your program's built. I mean, especially at the guards right now. You look at. Okay, Emily goes out and catches a breather. It's no off day for the defense or for the opponent, rather, uh, on either side of the floor because you get Carolyn Wolkley out there, and she's as tough as they come, and she's probably as competitive as Emily is, and she goes out there and she scraps on both ends of the floor. Not too many people get the better of Carolyn. Right, yeah, and Carolyn stepped up well for us here down the stretch. Um, and, and that's really how we're built. We. We have a lot of good players, and so we try to, to use that depth to our advantage and try to wear people down. And if you look, a lot of times in the fourth quarter is when we've kind of pulled away. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of by design, yep. and that's what we hope to do. Now, tournament play changes a little bit. The media timeouts and things like that changes. But um, I'm just proud of all our kids, Carolyn and, and everybody else, for, for stepping in there when their number's called and doing all they can to help us win. What have you seen from Kira Philpot over those last two months? She's really seemed to raise her level of play uh, as the OAC race really heated up. And she's given you some really quality minutes uh, both on both ends of the floor, rebounding, and then she gives you a lot of intensity too. Yeah, Kira, Kira started, she she didn't start the year for, she was hurt. Yep. Missed the first three games and missed all of preseason. She actually got hurt in one of their open gyms right before um, season started. Got a call, coach, got to come over here. Kira's hurt. I'm like, oh no, you know. And, um, yeah, thank goodness it was just MCL, but still, she was out a 
good four weeks and then um, had to try to work back and she's not been 100 percent yet so she gives us all that she has and she has come in and, and sparked us and just is going to play hard and going to do all she, another one that's going to do all she can to help us win when her number's called her 85 percent is a heck of a lot better than most people's hundred and it starts here yep. with her heart she yep. plays with her heart and you can see that every time she takes the floor no matter what happens she's going to give you your best or you her best and that's another thing that you've really built up throughout your time here with the program you want those athletes that are going to give everything that they have not just for themselves and for their own success but for the good of the team and that's ultimately why you've made 17 appearances in the NCAA tournament and four straight now. Yeah it, and that starts in the recruiting and um, you know we ask our players to be involved at that because sometimes they get more information than we get <laughs> when they, you know they go to lunch whatever it's a little more relaxed and um we listen to our players' feedback, and if there's red flags about someone being a team player, that that sometimes changes our direction mm -hmm. with what we're doing. So, and then from day one, like that's the expectation, and our older kids understand that's the expectation. That's a team. We're going to do everything as a team, and um, no one player is any more important than another. And obviously, you know, somebody like Kaylee is is big, but other kids need to be ready to go. Yep. And um, yeah. Like, I'm just really proud of how our kids buy in yep. to what we ask of them. And um, luckily, it pays off. In, it in sure wins. does. I, you've had the, one of the most successful runs in Ohio Athletic Conference history, and it's not by accident. It's by hard work on the recruiting trail. Uh, once you get the young ladies on campus, it starts with them putting in the off-season work. And then once the regular season hits, it's full steam ahead. Yep, absolutely. And our kids have done a great job getting in the gym on their own, even during the season. Like, they are in the gym outside of practice time, getting in extra shots and doing all the things that you would ever want kids to do to be the best they could be. Yeah, and that's the, the seniors who are really helping set that tone. People like Megan Hensel, who <laughs> she gets a nickname Grandma from some of her teammates because she's been in the program for a number of years. But, you know, she's setting a tone. Izzy, Andrews, and Reagan Schill also come in and, and set a tone for the team of this is how we need to play, not how we want to play. This is how we have to do it to find success. And that trickles down so when those freshmen become the sophomores and the juniors and step up in leadership roles, it's ingrained in them. And that's really what helps perpetuate a successful program. That, that's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> and one thing in, in – Megan's defense she her junior year her first junior year or whatever <laughs> she did miss the only, she got hurt in the very last minute of our first practice during COVID so she really did miss the entire year so it's not like some of these COVID fifth years where they play right. 12 to 15 games and now they're back right for she another. had a medical reason absolutely yep. so whether it was COVID or not she's not a COVID fifth year she's a, a hardship fourth year and in really only her true fourth year of playing basketball right. because she missed that entire year and actually that summer too because she was still rehabbing during that time so um yeah the, the grandma thing <laughs> she's a little older in age but no more experienced in basketball than Reagan or Izzy right absolutely well coach good luck against Wartburg in the first round you're going up to Holland Michigan a, a trip that you know uh, very well. You've been up to yep. Hope many times. and uh, It seems like every other year yeah, that's where we go. So yeah, it, it, To me, it seems like it's a little bit more than every yeah, other it does year. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, you got shipped out last year to the east, yep. and it looked, you know, hey, you were going to avoid Hope, and that yep. was a good thing, and uh, not so much on the draw this year. But, hey, you get to play them in their house. No better opportunity to make a statement than right there uh, in the field house up in Holland. Coach, best of luck Thank you against so much, Warburg, Matt. and hopefully you get that chance against Hope in that second round. Would love it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. That's Coach Sherry here of the women's basketball program once again making it to the NCAA tournament, their 17th appearance in school history and their fourth consecutive trip to the NCAA tournament. Now we're going to